It is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profound sick society. It's a quote from Jiro Krishnamurti. And this video is not about a habit you can do whenever you want to not feel unwanted emotions, nor is it about changing negative emotions into positive ones. For this only works temporarily and you have to keep doing it with effort. I mean, it's just a matter of time before you feel negative again, right? And I ask this, so you may ask yourself, because never believe me, never believe my words. And in this case, ask yourself if all those things that you've tried before, did you really not feel negative emotions anymore? I don't think so, right? Otherwise you probably don't watch this video. So what we are looking for, what I'm looking for is not a method that temporarily works, but something that always works without effort. You don't have to do each time. So this is only for the serious person who believes that it is possible for the rest of his life to control his emotions and has the desire to find out how for himself or herself. And as an example, I want to use stress, the emotion of stress in this video, something I suffered a great deal from myself. And regardless of what the industry tells me that stress is normal for CEOs, I do not accept that stress and emotions like anger, regret, disappointment, to continue to, to affect my state of peace without control. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Jordan, 23 years old, did over $4 million in revenue, hired over 50 people. And I started making videos on YouTube in 2012. I share this because you've been conditioned to believe, to care about numbers and appearance, but it is effectiveness over appearance that matters. So what is effective? Is it a life where you can feel emotions on demand, like Netflix? You just get the controller instead of a life being controlled by the emotions. A life where your parents, son or daughter may pass away and you do not feel any emotions. A life where your company goes bankrupt, yet you do not feel fear. A life where the world is at your feet, yet you do not feel the desire for pleasure. These things will hit hard to the person, I would say, that is new to this that has never thought about this. If that's you, then know that probably your mind starts speaking whenever I said those things that I just said. And if you can recognize that, you are already ahead than most people. And not in a hat as a competition, but more so in understanding what life is really about. A life where my mind, my emotions do not control me, but I control them. I experience life as it is, not as this very clouded picture that comes from here. This is a life that I want. For all else is nonsense, fake, shallow. So how do we get there is my question. Well, we need a mind that doesn't distort reality, which requires a lot of attention. For there can be no thought. Become free of all the illusions that thought has created. We want to find out what is, not what we believe to be true, without even realizing that most of the things are beliefs. Can you see how detrimental this can be if you never realized it? I mean, it is easy to defend yourself against a crocodile in front of you, but it is impossible to defend yourself against the snake camouflage next to you. So do you see the danger? The danger of your family, the danger of your friends, the danger of your YouTube feed. Do you see this? To give you an example, your parents may say, when it is raining outside, that is bad weather and they have been telling you that, or, or you've been hearing that since you were young, ever since. Almost anyone, at least where I'm from, nobody likes the rain. So since you were young, you didn't go outside when it was raining, right? Or only if you really had to, because you were conditioned to see it as bad, correct? But in parts of Africa, kids may be conditioned to believe rain is good, and they get excited to go outside when it is raining and play. Well, what's the truth? Rain is not bad or good. It is simply part of nature, it happens. And the people around you are leading you astray from observing nature as it is. Even the people you follow online, anyone, they are leading you astray from seeing the truth, seeing reality. And you, or if I, I, won't do, I don't want to speak for you, but most people do not see this. I did not see this for a very, very, very long time because it happens very subtle for years and years since you were born. Which brings us to where we are now. A human who is no longer a human. Instead, you've created a self-image that you are now attached to. I did. Many. I had many. 
an image of yourself that dresses accordingly, speaks accordingly, believes accordingly. You may see yourself as a successful entrepreneur and wear a suit. You may see yourself as an alpha male and you should go to the gym. Or you may see yourself as a fit girl and thus wear a gym shark. Whatever it is, I'm not sure who I'm talking to. But you know this for yourself. If you think about it, if you think about the self-image that you have created for yourself. And I had multiple. I was defending them ruthlessly. When people were attacking my self-image that I had, so the thing I believed about myself. I mean, I could become really angry or upset or irritated. I might not show it, but this is what I felt inside. And that is what I mean. It's not so about the, like most people can control their emotions, how they act towards others, but they cannot control what they feel inside. This is what I'm talking about. So all of it seems good until there is conflict, until you feel a negative emotion which comes from the self-image. And don't believe me, just look for yourself what really happens when reality shows you that you are not successful, if that's your self-image, or not an alpha male, or not fit, or not healthy, while you believe to be. Self-image plays a very big role in our lives and the emotions we feel. May you see the danger in it, my friend, the danger in it all. Every time when I see reality as it truly is, not distorted, then the emotion disappears without effort. But seeing reality for what it is, it requires a lot of focus, at least in the beginning, a lot of desire, a lot of concentration, for there are many clouds clouding your judgment, many beliefs in front of the facts, many thoughts deemed as true. So to get back at the example I posed in the beginning of this video, why it is that we feel stressed when there are high bills to pay, when there are lots of things to do we maybe don't want to do, or when your employee wants to resign if you are a business owner, or when you get injured if you're an athlete, or when, uh, when something happens to your kids if you're a father or mother. Why do we feel stress when certain things happen? Because we let our thoughts control us. Think about it. This inner voice starts speaking without us noticing it. It just starts talking. It talks to us the whole day. And when we become aware of it a little bit, like not fully aware, but when we start to become aware, we think it is us speaking, right? We think we control this voice here. We hear it, we listen to it because we think it is us speaking. We think it is good to think already ahead about certain things that might happen. We might think about memories and all of this happens without controlling it. Do you see what I mean? It just keeps, keeps, keeps coming and we can't stop it. Can we? I say we can. Reality is right here, right now. You are alive, this is the truth. Not that you might die tomorrow because of whatever you think. Not that you might go bankrupt tomorrow because whatever you feel. And not because you think you can never play sport again because you are injured right now. Right now is reality. We are not our thoughts, we are not our memories. And we are definitely not our thoughts about the future. But this is easier said than done. But don't let your mind trick you if it may start to say, oh, well, yeah, it takes a lot of effort, therefore I can take my time, right? Because that is maybe what it is saying right now. I can take my time and take it slowly. It will take a lot of effort. And that's not what I'm saying. And by the way, do you see why meditation doesn't bring a solution for this? It only provides a temporary escape, a temporary quietness. But we have to keep meditating each time to have there some peace. It takes a lot of effort, right? At least that is what happened to me. I can't speak for you, but ask yourself how easy it is for you to start meditating, and how easy it is for you to sit there still in quiet while all those thoughts are happening. So what I'm saying is not how can we never have thoughts again, but how can we effortlessly recognize them when they come and they will effortlessly disappear the same way but not sitting there still in peace, in meditation. Although you can do that, but in meditation, you're not going to meditate 24 seven. You're not going to sit down in quietness. Uh, again, you can, but I don't think most of us would want that. So how can we recognize that these thoughts pop up? So therefore, they start to come up less often. And whenever they come, they go away without effort, not through meditation, not through an ice bath, not through peaceful music, books, or whatever you have it. I mean, there's 
too many things you can try nowadays that will only work temporarily. I mean, it's, it's no wonder why there are so many things and why so many people are doing it, why, why it is so popular. I mean, you can, uh, if I may assume, you have seen a lot of these videos on YouTube about all these self-improvement things. And they work, right? Some of them work for you, only temporarily. The effect often fades away. And it is no wonder it is so popular because it is far easier to do this and to talk about it, to even improve your ego, to continue to stimulate it, to tell others how many minutes you do in an ice bath and so on. This is far more easy than to really understand where it is in this example stress, where that emotion really comes from. So to master your emotions, you have to master your mind, control it, surpass it, or however you want to call it. I say it often, control your mind or it will control you. If you want to go deeper into this matter, you can watch this video next. And the serious person may check the show notes. And if you're trying to find the truth in a specific situation in your own life, but you can't really seem to find it, then you can always send me an email. I don't ask you for money because honestly, sometimes it helps me see the truth in my own life. But I'm only interested in, in conversing with serious people. We have already enough unserious ones in this world. So if you're serious, you may email me. And here's my poem about the essence of this video. Talk soon. A life where your parents, son or daughter pass away, yet you do not feel pain. A life where your company goes bankrupt, yet you do not feel fear. A life where the world is at your feet, yet you do not feel the desire for pleasure's need. To master emotions, destroy all fear. I must see the illusions, see it clear. No longer it's through my thoughts that deceive. I must find truth, not more to believe. For when my self-image crumbles, my illusions fade. I finally see what is, no longer afraid. For in clarity's light, emotions cease. And in this mastery, I find my peace.